Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.8 and Ergis Simulation's Mirage F1 EE module. Welcome to tutorial 4, Radar Air-to-Air -air BVR. Uh, BVR, as always, standing for Beyond Visual Range. Um, in the Mirage F1, we have the Serrano 4 Radar, which is a, a kind of early Cold War era pulse Doppler radar, has a maximum range of 60 nautical miles, and it can lock targets out to 35 nautical miles. It can do so uh, with a kind of single target track, a mode called APC, which stands for Continuous Pursuit. Uh, this is the same basically as STT tracks that you would get with modern radars. It also supports a mode called APS, which is Pre-Select Auth, uh, and this basically is like TWS in modern radars. Allows you to lock a target while maintaining situational awareness. So let's go over the, the basics of the operation of this radar. Um, we of course have the radar scope here. Uh, on the ground you can add or remove the radar hood. Uh, for this demonstration I've removed it to improve visibility. Uh, and on the face of the radar itself, you have lights here which will give you the different modes of the radar. For today's tutorial, we will only be using HA, which is this first mode here, that stands for high altitude. Uh, the mode can be changed with this rotary at the lower centre of the display, uh, clicking through these different modes. You can see all the different things we can do. We have things like ground mapping modes and things like that as well. Uh, but for today's demonstration, we will just use HA mode, which is going to be your primary BVR mode. We then have the uh, altitude difference and elevation window here. Uh, this has a variety of different modes and can display different information, whether you're scanning or locking, uh, so we'll cover that in just a moment. Uh, down the right hand side here we have the currently selected range scale. We're currently in 60 nautical miles, which is the maximum. We can bump it down to 35, 15, or seven nautical miles, uh, with the, the range indications changing depending on which one you're in. For 60 nautical miles, it's 10 nautical miles uh, for each line. 35 is the same, it's also 10 nautical miles. Uh, for the 15 one, however, though, I believe it's something like... Oh, I've actually forgotten. I guess it's five. Yeah, <laughs> theory me. Uh, and for seven, I think it's three. Uh, so you get different uh, range indications there. We're going to bump ours into 35, because that's about where we want to be for today. You then have warning lights down the, the side here. Uh, you've got warning lights for failures, not emitting, overheated, and the um, amplifier. Uh, so basically, in normal operation, all of these lights should be extinguished. Uh, we have a test button, which is non-functional. Uh, we have a blank button, which immediately blanks the display. And then we have the main brightness control here which will probably be quite useful in nighttime operation, but during the day you want to bump that up. Uh, and then we have the storage adjustment, it calls it. It's basically how long returns should remain on the display. Uh, if we go a little bit further down, we have individual controls here for different elements of the display. Some of these are implemented and some of these are not. Uh, here we have the horizon symbol, vertical position. This is the horizon symbol here. It shows the horizon, but it also shows current aircraft rotation. I'm just going to demonstrate that just now. So when your head's down, uh, you can actually very quickly reference what your aircraft attitude is. Uh, and we can actually roll that up or down on the display if we'd like it in different positions. Uh, normally it's at the bottom. You have an adjustment here for the horizon and radial velocity marker brightness. Uh, I don't know if that's actually implemented. We've got the strobe brightness, which is definitely not implemented because it doesn't seem to change. Uh, we have adjustments for indicator lights. That does work. And we have an adjustment for the distant marker lines, which also doesn't seem to work. Uh, on the left-hand side of the navigational instrument here, we have the main control for the radar power. It can be in emissive, it can be in standby, and it can be in off. Um, we, of course, need it to be in emissive for the purposes of this demonstration. Radar normally takes three minutes to warm up. 
Secures is a emergency transmission button. If the radar has had a fault, you can press this to reset it and make it come back on. Um, and if, if for any reason that it, it has temporarily shut down, pressing this is supposed to make it come back on. You then have the uh, the, the four line, one line uh, setting. This is like bars in uh, modern radars. So you can have a four bar scan where it will scan two bars above and two bars below your current altitude, or you can flip it down into the one bar mode, in which case it will just scan your current altitude. Uh, further controls for the radar are found down on the left hand side here. This is the radar control stick. And uh, here we can see our control for the currently selected range. I recommend mapping this. You also can adjust the, uh, the scan volume that you want, either 60 degrees or 30 degrees. Uh, that's probably also a good one to map. Note that when you're, when you're in the 30 degree mode, uh, it will actually follow the Allidade. Now the Allidade is this um, cursor basically. So as you move the cursor about, as you move the Allidade about, uh, the volume, the 30 degree volume will move with the cursor. This of course gives you a much faster refresh. You then also have a button here which allows you to change the elevation mode between its difference or elevation modes. Uh, we'll demonstrate that in just a moment. You've got buttons here for changing the elevation up and down. You have uh, this thing on the side here is actually the gain control for the radar. And then there's a trigger on the front. If you push the top of the trigger, it does APS, which is TWS lock. If you push the bottom of the trigger, it does APC, which is an STT lock. You then also have this little finger hook here for unlocking, and that will dump the currently selected contact. So we're going to leave it in 35 nautical miles, 30 degree scan, and let's see if we can pick ourselves out a little target here. And as I move my Allidade around, you'll see that, yep, we seem to have a target here, and we seem to have a target here. These are two aircraft. They're obviously co-located uh, co with, with our altitude. Now, note that as I flip the elevation mode between E and D, um, we're, we'll be able to actually make some adjustments here. So the D, it stands for difference mode. And in difference mode, the radar will display the difference in altitude in thousands of feet. So if we know that there's a target, for example, a thousand feet above us, I can put the uh, system into D mode, place, pr place the Allidade roughly where I expect the target to be, because it is um, difference in altitude at the current position of the Allidade, and then I can bump that up to a particular elevation. You can see I'm now displaying positive one. If there was a target ahead that was a thousand feet below us, I could bump this down and get it to negative one, and that would work as well. You can see that I'm actually still seeing this target because that's not enough of an elevation difference to not appear in the, the currently selected scan volume. However, if I go ahead and bump this all the way down, we're now pointing the radar at the ground, basically, you'll see that that target disappears. And let's bring it all the way back up again. I'm going to bring it back to minus one, so it's now looking at minus one at that range. However, notice that if I bring the Allidade all the way down to a different range, it disappears, because again, it's it's the difference in altitude at the current position of the Allidade. Let's uh, reset that back to zero, and let's move the Allidade back up to the volume we want to scan. Actually, we probably want that bit plus one. There we go. There's now a strobe showing up again. We have a target. Now I'm going to tap it again. I'm going to go to elevation mode. Elevation mode um, basically works in degrees as opposed to thousands of feet. So I can now say that I want to look up by three degrees. I first need to place the Allidade at 10 nautical miles. The system only works at 10 nautical miles. Uh, I'm saying that I want uh, positive three degrees. Now as I move the Allidade, uh, the angle will ma maintain the same. However, this output here will now show me difference in thousands of feet at that location. Uh, so if I'm at 10 nautical miles, that's degrees. As I move it away, the number is actually a difference in altitude. That will be more apparent if I bump the range out. You can see that uh, I can move this around and get varying figures there. It also note I can't move the Allidade beyond 35 nautical miles because that is maximum lock range. Okay, I'm going to bring this back down to zero again, switch to difference mode and say plus one. At this stage, I should now see one of the strobes again. I do. I'm going to pull the trigger on the radar control stick down into APC. It's sometimes hard to get a lock. You might need multiple attempts. There we go.
Okay, I'm going to pause it here because we now have AP, APC, which is continuous pursuit mode. This is an STT log. So in this mode, we get a strobe of radar just along where the target is. The Alidade is rotated 90 degrees and then placed over the currently locked target. So that's our target. You can see this is our center line here. Target is currently left of center line. Looks like something like 20 degrees left of nose. Uh, we still have our horizon information here. And then we also get uh, our uh, closure rate showing up here. So the gap would mean not uh, approaching us or receding. The lower part uh, below the gap is receding. Above the gap means that we are closing on that particular target. We will then also get information in the sight glass if we have the target in front of us. So let's come out of active pause. Let's maneuver to place the target in front of us. And we lost the lock. Let's try that again. The radar can be a little bit finicky because, of course, it is a much older radar than we've been used to. It will potentially take multiple attempts. I've also been descending. Let's see if we can get the aircraft's attitude back under control as well. All right, let's try and get that locked. We got it quite easily. There we go. We got it quite easily the first time. It was harder that time. So what we'll now notice... Oh, we just lost the lock again. If we maneuver too hard, uh, it will tend to be the case that we're going to lose the, the radar. Let's see if I can get him again. Right, I've got him again. Uh, if we maneuver onto target and then pause here, you'll now notice that I have an orange square showing up in the HUD, and this is my reference for the target. So that gives us uh, a kind of nice, uh, easy angular reference. Other thing to note is that uh, the difference window on the radar display will now show us the difference in altitude of the target. Because once we've locked the target, uh, the system will automatically maintain uh, the uh, angle of the antenna in order to retain the lock. Actually, I'm just going to switch us back to 60 degrees. There we go. Okay. So uh, we're maneuvering to bring the target in. If I accelerate, you'll see that our closure rate will increase. And we can see that because the mark is moving up the closure rate indicator. Uh, and we'll close in on this target. So that's working nicely. I'm now going to pull the unlock lever. And that target is now gone. Uh, note that it's retained the uh, altitude difference of plus one. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to have a go at engaging APS mode. So let's see if I can get this guy on APS mode. And there we go, we've got him. So if I go ahead and uh, pause again, you'll notice that in APS mode, we're not in that kind of single target track symbology. We have a normal scan occurring. However, the Alidade is now locked over the top of that target. It's rotated 90 degrees, just like when it was in single target track. And we have our orange square. The great thing about this mode is that we can retain situational awareness. So if I now maneuver to the right, uh, actually I'm going to check F10. Yeah, we have another target kind of beyond. Uh, if I actually bump the range, there we go. I can actually see the other target beyond. I'm going to go ahead and pause just here. You'll see that our currently APS or pre-selected target is showing up here. However, I am getting another return in the background here. Uh, and I still get my orange square, which would mean that I could still engage this target with missiles. This is very, very handy for situational awareness. So that's what the APS mode looks like. Now, I could pull the unlock lever again and then simply pull uh, APC to do a continuous lock, and now I'm back in single target track. Theoretically, this should be harder for the, the aircraft to evade and to break. Um, so, you know, it could be quite useful in situations where you're maneuvering hard. Note that if I maneuver hard myself, well, I didn't manage to do it that time, was doing it when I didn't want it to. Uh, if I maneuver hard, the, the lock may be broken. Or if the other aircraft maneuvers hard um, or gets into a situation where the radar returns are not strong enough. Uh, note that um, in the event that the, the lock is, is broken, the system will try to reacquire it for, for a moment. It has a memory mode. But no. 
Uh, I'm actually, I'm not at all managing to, to lose this lock. <laughs> Good stuff. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and break that lock now. We're back into the normal scanning mode. And that's uh, basically all the standard functionality of the radar. I'm going to pop us into autopilot just now, just so I don't crash while I'm doing this. Something else to note is that the current position of the Allidade or the locked target is represented by the thin needle on your navigational instrument, as long as this switch is in the R position. If I flip this to V, it will actually show uh, the uh, bearing information to your currently selected radar navigational aid. So you can either be in VOR or ILS mode, or you can be in radar mode, and it will track your target. That can be quite useful uh, if you've not immediately figured out what direction or what heading your target is to you. Uh, if I put the radar into standby, everything kind of looks the same, but we lose the actual returns. Uh, and of course, if we turn it off entirely, uh, all the lights and whatnot go off. If I put it back on after that, it will need to do a short warm-up. Uh, during which time you'll notice that uh, we have warning lights, uh, which will go out as soon as the radar has finished its little power-up and warm-up cycle. And uh, that's basically it. Those are the absolute basics of air-to-air -air BVR employment for the Serrano 4 radar in the Mirage F1EE. I hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.